Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah. This will be the last chapter of the book, chapter 52. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you want to know about Mystery Babylon... In the book of Revelation, just look no further than the book of Jeremiah and the book of Daniel. I wish I knew the book of Daniel better. Uh, I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of things there. That's why I wouldn't dare do a commentary on it, because I would probably be wrong. But... Uh, when you look at Mystery Babylon in the end times, all the themes come from physical Babylon that Jeremiah and Daniel and others wrote about. So, matter of fact, uh, you ever see a pawn shop and it has the, uh, the three... Uh, three balls hanging from whatever supposedly that comes from Babylon I don't know how true that is but I'm just throwing it out there so and Jeremiah is not in any kind of order so it's they divide it up in the chapters but it's not in chronological order but then again neither is the book of Revelation it kind of jumps around. All right, so let's read Jeremiah chapter 52. Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamutal, Hamutal the daughter of Jeremiah of Libnah. And he did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Boy, that phrase happens a lot in the Bible. And he did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, till he had cast them out of his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Not a smart thing to do. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his army against Jerusalem, and pitched against it and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged until the 11th year of King Zedekiah. Well, you know, when you besiege a city, no food is getting into the city. That's just the way it is. Verse 6. And in the sixth month, in the ninth day of the month, well, let me read verse 5 again. So the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of the land. You know, it's kind of hard to fight when you haven't eaten for a couple weeks, you know. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of the war fled and went forth out of the city by night by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about, and they went by the way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Riblah, 
in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He also slew all the princes of Judah in Riblah. And he put out the eyes of Zedekiah. Wow, he blinded him. First he lets him watch his children get killed. And then he blinds him. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah and the king of Babylon, bound him in chains, and carried him to Babylon, and put him in prison till the day of his death. Now that was the, the, I believe that's the death of the king of Nebuchadnezzar. The king, that, I think it was the, until the death of the king of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, let's see. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon, into Jerusalem. And he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem and all the houses of the great men burned he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard break down all the walls of Jerusalem round about. Yep, they tore down the walls. They said, you know what? This ain't going to happen again. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive certain of the poor of the people and the residue of the people that remained in the city and those that fell away that fell to the king of Babylon and the rest of the multitude. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. So yeah, you leave the poor of the land, you know, they're not going to make any trouble for you. And you let them uh, tend the gardens and the orchards. You know, that's what a husbandman is. And, you know, they'll tend the gardens and the orchards, the trees and the the, uh, the great vineyards and what have you. So, verse 17. Also, the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans break and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. The cauldrons also, and the shovels, and the snuffers, and the bowls, and the spoons, and all the vessels of brass, wherewith they ministered, took they away. And the basins, and the fire pans, and the bowls, and the cauldrons, and the candlesticks, and the, and the spoons, and the cups, that was, that which was of gold in gold, and that which was of silver and silver took the captain of the guard away. Now remember when uh, Belshazzar drank from the cups of the Lord's temple? Probably golden cups and silver cups. Remember, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. So they took them all. They took everything of value. To Babylon. Now, I wouldn't have thought brass would have been that uh, valuable, but evidently they thought it was valuable enough to take it away. So, verse, twiller, uh, verse 20. The two pillars, one sea and twelve brazen bulls that were under the bases, which King Solomon had made in the house of the Lord, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. In other words, it was so heavy, they didn't even bother to weigh it. And concerning the pillars, the height of one pillar was 18 cubits. A uh, cubit is about half a meter or 18 inches, approximately. And a fillet of 12 cubits did composite, and the thickness thereof was four fingers, 
it was hollow. And a chapiter of brass was upon it, and the height of one chapiter was five cubits, with network and pomegranates upon the chapiters round about, all of brass. The second pillar also and the pomegranates were like unto it. So, a chapter is uh, an architectural an architectural word. It means the up the upmost part of a column uh, upon which the roof is supported. So, usually they do something fancy you know when they uh when they have that all right so let's go back the second pillar also and the pomegranates were like unto these verse 23 and there were 90 and 6 pomegranates on a side and all the pomegranates upon the network were an hundred round about and the captain of the guard took Sariah the chief priest and Zephaniah the second priest and the three keepers of the door he took also out of the city an eunuch which had the charge of the men of war and seven men of them that were near the king's person which were found in the city and the principal scribe of the host who mustered the people of land and three score men of the people of land that were found in the midst of the city. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon to Riblah. And the king of Babylon smote them and put them to death in Riblah in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried away captive out of his own land. Now remember, these these priests were allowing all this you know did they warn the people of god's judgment did they tell him uh, the people god's law to turn from their evil wicked ways were they being faithful to the lord's work well if they were god probably wouldn't have put them to death but he did Verse 28. This is the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. All right, verse 28. This is the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive in the seventh year, 3,000 Jews and 3 and 20. In the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem 820, 830 and two persons. In the 3 and 20th year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Jews 740 and five persons. All the persons were 4,600. And it came to pass in the seventh and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, in the five and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, how's that for a name? Evil Merodach, king of Babylon in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him forth out of the prison, and spake kindly unto him, and set his throne above the thrones of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments, and he did continually eat bread before him all the days of his life. And for his diet there was a continual diet given him of the king of Babylon every day a portion until the day of his death, all the days of his life. Now, Nebuchadnezzar put Jehoiakim, king, into prison. When Nebuchadnezzar died, then evil Merodach, 
became king. For what I understand, uh, he was only king for two years, and then he died, and then uh, Belshazzar, which we read about, you know, the writing on the wall, became king. But evil Merodach gave, had uh, pity on the king of Judah. And you know what? When when somebody only lives uh, as a king for two years, you kind of wonder. A lot of times, brothers would kill brothers so that they could be king. Now, I'm not saying Belshazzar did that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, you should read about the history of the United Kingdom's uh, or England's kings. Boy, a lot of... Oof. I couldn't imagine killing a family member so I could be king. I just, I don't get it. But then again, I don't have the ambition that some of them have. So, uh, yeah, but that's how it goes. Also, uh, something you should know, I'm going to do a video on what is called Kuru, K-U-R-U, -U, Kuru. It is a disease that is mentioned in New Guinea among people that were cannibals. Well, I guess you could call them people, but whatever. But I'm not going to be able to post it on you know where. I'm going to have to post it somewhere else. And... Um, it has reference to the health practices that are going on right now, if you catch my drift. I don't want to use certain keywords because, yeah. I don't know if you know it, but uh, YouTube is now running a, what's quote, copyright check, unquote. I think what they're doing is before they post a video, uh, they're looking for keywords and then they'll flag your video and if it contains something that they deem unsuitable for their platform it never makes it to the um, it never makes it posted so I don't know something to think about but I'm going to I'm going to talk about the um, health practices going on now and the possible connection of Kuru. Uh, in cows, Kuru is called mad cow disease. Yeah. And then deer have been showing up with what they call chronic wasting disease. Kuru is comes from eating if we could trust the science, infected uh, meat. Very interesting. So, I don't know. So keep an eye on it. I'm probably going to post it to archive.org as far as I know. There is almost nowhere else to post stuff. It's getting bad getting real bad. I had high hopes for uh, um, Bright Eon. That turned out to be a waste. And then I had uh, BitChute. I had high hopes for that, but they're, they're useless. You know, people, I've spent months loading videos, and they just delete them. Months. And it's not just the tube. It's, it's, a lot of the platforms. So it's getting to be unprofitable, a waste of time. That's why I tell you, get a king, get your hide some King James Bibles away. Hit the used bookstore. I bought Bibles for two and three dollars. You know? Of course, that's back when my eyes were decent. I need large print now. I don't like wearing glasses. Um, I spoke to an, a guy that was an eye doctor, and he says, you know what? He says, once you start wearing eyeglasses, he says, your eyes are going to get lazy. 
And he says, every year you'll have to get new glasses because it'll be a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger. He says, once you start wearing them, you're going to have problems. I mean, yeah, if you want to put them on for half an hour to read, that's fine. But when you start wearing them all the time, your eyes will get lazy. Yeah. So that's what, that's what an eye doctor told me. So I just get the large print, you know, no problem. And I can adjust my computer screen to have a um, large, it's in the uh, options, upper right-hand corner. Uh, I think it's in the three dots, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the three dots on Windows. You know, it'll say uh, Zoom. So, all righty. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.